Hi, in this video we'll be going through hands-on free setting up the structure part 2 for your model for analysis of energy demand model. So having looked at the initial stages of how to set up the structure, this one navigates into the subsectors and shows how to add and delete subsectors, define the structure of the industry sector and of the define the structure of the household sector. Please make sure you read this document as well. This video is only for to show you how to do the practical elements and does not necessarily cover all of the details as they are mentioned on the hands-on exercise. So we're going to begin with navigating the subsectors. To do this, we open up our MIAD um, software. We're going to be working on the MIAD demo, uh, demo MIAD 1, which is the one we created in the previous hands-on. So if we click on this, this brings us to the general information section as before. So over here, as you can see, there is underneath the sectors and clients, agriculture, construction, mining, manufacturing, energy, services, households, and transport. These are what we call sectors. So this is how the model is structured. Underneath each of these, there is also a subsector. So for the case of agriculture, we can see that there is only one subsector called farming. We can't do anything about this subsector because it is the only one defined. However, if there is more than one defined, you can go ahead and delete the subsectors. Now let's look at construction, for example. Under construction, there is only buildings defined. Under mining, there is metal ores and non-metal ores. We can see over here that we can delete the non-metal ores if need be. For manufacturing basic materials, in energy, not, nothing has been defined services there's a list of them commercial and tourism public administration finance and bus so on and so forth household again a number of definitions and for transport again a number of definitions so these are used in order to structure our model which is something that we'll be talking about at a later stage now let's say for agriculture where there was only farming involved we can already look and see what, how this looks like in the socioeconomic data point as well so if we come over here and we click on GDP, we can see over here that of the distribution of GDP by subsectors. In the case of farming, we can see the figures that have been put in place for this. We can also see in terms of the subsectors how much of energy intensities there is involved. So let's say from industry. If we click on industry, we can see over here agriculture, where uh, under which there is farming defined in kilowatt hours per US dollar and then there's the figures for it. Once again, when these boxes are in gray, you cannot edit them. When they're in white, they can be edited. So this is how you look at the structure of your model based on sectors and subsectors. Now, let's look at what we would do in terms of wanting to add or remove a sector or a subsector. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the general information we're going to come back to agriculture and what we're going to do is have a look at this table again we can see that there is a green plus which is for adding a new sector and the save button so let's add a new sector and let's call this others what we're going to do is we're going to do this and then we're going to save it this has been saved successfully now let us examine the same tables that we saw a moment ago. So if we go back to the GDP page, we can see now that there is also others included in this. However, as we can see, there is in the section of others, data cannot be entered just yet. If we do the same thing and we go into the industries, we can see that over here, there isn't others included in this. So you'd wonder why is this subsector others which falls under agriculture not included in this this is because when we defined it we did not select what are the different sectors that can be combined with this so what we're going to do instead is we're going to select all of them and we're going to save this what this means is that the program now will see that there is specific energy use in the sector of others in the sorry the subsector of others there is thermal use in this sector and there is motive power use in this sector, which we can define and add figures to. Now, if we're going back into industry, we'll see others being mentioned over here. 
We can do the same thing by looking at another example. So if we come back onto the general information, we go into mining, we'll see that there is metal ores and um, non-metal ores in this. Going back into the socioeconomic data and GDP, we can see that there is going to be metal ores and non-metal ores already existing in this. Please note that in each sector, the roles of the last sec subsectors are shaded. This means that those roles are a result of calculations performed by the program and the cells are locked from editing. So whatever is shaded, this is a result of the calculation done by the MIAD model. MIAD D is calculating the last subsector so that the sum of the participation of all subsectors is 100, which would make sense. So let us try and um, delete subsectors. We can delete the same one that we added earlier, so which is on the general information tab. So let's say the others, if we want to get rid of this, what we do is we click on the X, we click on yes, we're going to click on the save data file. So now this has been deleted from um, the MAD model. We go back into the socioeconomic data and we click on GDP. We'll see that now agriculture farming adds up to 100%. Also, one thing to note is that transport does not appear in the se sectoral share of GDP in this table. The GDP component of the transport sector must be added to the services sector. And the same must be done with the energy consumed in facilities associated with transport. For example, electricity consumed at airports. Here, as we can see, there is no transport in this sector specifically. We're now going to work with the structure of the residential sector. This is referred to as the household sector. The household sector can be found in the general information, sectors and clients, and then if we click on household over here. Now we can see all the different subsectors that have been defined in this model. What we would like to do is go back to the hands-on exercise and see where it leads us. So we can see that there is a need to define some of the households in, ter in terms of including them and um, editing some of them. So in this case, we wish to study the different types of urban and rural households. There are three urban and three rural type of households. So we're gonna make sure that this matches. And the point of this exercise is for you to edit some of these sectors. So we can see that under urban, there's apartment, family house, and DW with SH. So we're going to check over here, apartment, family house, DW with SH. And then underneath, there is rural 1, rural 2, and rural 3. So we're going to go back over here. There's only rural 1 that has been included in this. So what we would want to do is add rural 2. And we would want to add rural 3. Again, once we've added this, we're going to click on save data. And in this case, this household sector contains the following additional end use subtypes, lightning, air conditioning, cooking, space heating, and water heating. We're going to ensure that these are all ticked in order to be in order to be taken in account in the model when the demand analysis is being conducted. This was the video for Hands-On 3. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful.